Hello, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Opio Isaac and today I'm going to take you through a very wonderful topic and that is how to stop fingering. Uh, if it is your first time to watch our video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that each time we send and upload a video, you, are, you get to be notified instantly. Today, our topic is looking at the young fish fingerlings. Fingerlings are basically the baby fish uh, between 3 grams and 6 grams. And whenever you are stocking fish of this size, they need special care because they are young and delicate. So I'm going to take you through the 5 steps that you can use to properly and effectively stock your fish with minimum stress that you have to create on them. The first step that you have to take into account is prepare your culture system. Your culture system can be a tank, your culture system can be a pond or a cage. If it is a pond, it means you'll have to do repair and maintenance. Compact the dikes, slash the grasses around, drain completely water from your pond, lime it, fertilize it, and if it is a, a tank, you have to clean it, disinfect uh, equipment that are necessary. Then another thing about preparing your culture system is refill your culture system with clean water. So you refill it with clean water. If it is a pond and it is your first time refilling it, it is also important during the refilling time to monitor and see how much your pond can contain your retention capacity. That is the first step that you have to do before you can do anything in stocking your fish. Then the second step you have to take in stocking fish is choose the quality fingerlings. Identify them well before you can actually purchase and bring to your farm. If it is, whether it is from your farm, your archery, in case you have an archery at your farm, or you are going to purchase them from a place further from your farm. So you have to choose quality because if you are taking fish farming as a business, the quality of the fingerlings you produce and you that you bring to your farm is very important because it will uh, determine how fast and short your production cycle can be and how faster your fish will grow. So it is very important. We have also attached a link to a, a special video we have made for choosing and identifying the right fingerlings. So you can tap into our description section and you find the link and watch the video. We have also made a write-up of how you can identify quality fingerlings. So you can visit our website at planexaquaculture.com and read through step by step how to identify fingerlings. And that is our second step when it comes to stopping fingerlings. Then the, the third step that uh, you need to know while stocking fingerlings is actually transporting them to your farm. If you are bringing them from another archery that you have sourced from a bit further place, you have to transport them. And if it is your own farm, you have to transfer, of course, from the archery section to your culture system. And there are certain key concepts you need to know when transporting your fingerlings. Being their small size and being delicate, one thing you need to know is you have to make sure the area, like the container that you are going to transport them in is insulated so that they can maintain that cool temperature until you can actually reach your farm and put them into your culture system. Or if you don't have an insulated container, make sure you create a shed for your fingerlings so that uh, the, the environment inside the container, whether it is a polythene bag or an insulated tank, is maintained at relatively same condition. And that is so key. Then another tip when it comes to transporting your fingerlings is you need to aerate the water that is having your fish. Aerate them. If it is a polythene bag, it means you have to aerate immediately after placing your fish. And if it is an insulated container, 
you can carry air pump so that you be pumping oxygen in the water as you transport your fish to your farm. Then the third thing is that you don't overcrowd your container so that you can give space for your fish to swim freely uh, as you transport them and that one helps you to minimize stress as you transport your fish. That is the third step. So it brings us to the fourth step, which is acclimatizing your fish. This is the step that happens when you have already reached your farm. So when you are at your farm and you come a long way from where you have sourced your fingerlings or from your archery where you are transferring them from, you have to acclimate this fish. And uh, one thing you can do to acclimate your fish is float the shipping bags on top of the water of your culture system. This one will enable the temperature of the water that you have used to carry your fish to equalize with the temperature of water in your culture, culture system. Another way you can acclimate your fish is actually getting a small amount of water from the culture unit and pouring it into your uh, the bag that you have used to transport your fish after opening it up so that uh, the fish can actually get used to the condition of the uh, culture system. This step, this step, which is the step number four, is very important and in most cases people who are just starting up their fish farm, they always tend to ignore or they have little knowledge about it. It is very important because it helps in minimizing stress. Remember, you have come a long way uh, after transporting your fish and uh, we suspect that your fish are a bit stressed because of the road conditions, small slight variation in the water conditions, be it temperature, be it oxygen. Uh, so by acclimating them, you're actually minimizing stress that you would put on to your fish before actually giving them, releasing them into a new culture system. So after acclimating them, then brings us to step number five, which is actually now releasing them into your water, into the culture system. Releasing the fish into your culture system, which is the after stopping now. So being young fish, you need to release them gently allow them to swim freely by themselves into this water and this is the time when you also have to monitor their swimming behaviors watch and see how they swim out the, 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 the vigor they have within them they swim out and you monitor them see the ones that are swimming sluggishly so that you know the condition that your fish have reached at your culture unit. So that is the last step, which is releasing. And brings us also to the end of our video. So another thing, which is a recommendation that I can give right now is that the culture unit where you're going to stock your fingerlings, the stocking capacity, the stocking density that is recommended for you to use is 100 to 250 fingerlings per cubic meter. So you can actually measure that before you can actually stock your fingerlings uh, because that is the one that is recommended and it allows your fingerlings to grow freely and very well and uh, vigorously into uh, the next step of their phase in growth. So that is it for, for now. Thank you so much for following up until the end of this video. I still repeat, if it is your first time to watch, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And also like it if you feel uh, this video has brought some value into your aquaculture knowledge so that YouTube can share it with more other people and we share this basic knowledge and important knowledge with all other people who are interested in fish farming. So thank you. Bye-bye for now.